All right, so the coil pottery project that we're going to be doing, these are all examples I have around the room and I use. This is a really elaborate one. But coil pottery starts, in our case, is going to start with the base and then we're going to roll cords or rope-like um, pieces of clay and stack them on top of each other, make different designs. So this is kind of a fancy one. I use it as my cup holder, my pen holder. Um, this one's kind of a combination. I put little feet on it, did two different glazes, and I had time to make a lid for it as well. This one sits on my desk. And this one's my, this is probably more what yours is going to look like because you're only going to have one class to do it. Um, this I use for paper clips all the time. So what you are going to need for the coil clay project is you will come in next class and I will have pre-cut slab bottoms for you. Remember, slabs, a nice flat piece of clay. What you're going to do is with your wooden needle tool, you're going to write your name. Your class code. Six. Thank you. And then moms really love it if you put the year. My mom still has my artwork out in her house from like elementary school. I'm not even joking. Then that is going to become the bottom. What you're going to do then is you're going to have balls of clay at your table. I'm going to go ahead and begin by rolling it in between my hands. Then I am going to roll it on the table. If you want to stand up for this project, I think it is a lot easier if you stand up so that your body weight is over top. I am rolling it pretty much from here, from the palm of my hand to like the tip of my fingertips. Do you hear that sound? Clonk, 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 clonk. Yeah. That means that it is not quite round. You need to actually apply a little bit more pressure. It's kind of flattening on one side, so. And I'm thinking this paper is going to drive me nuts. I'm just going to do it on the table. You can do this a couple different ways. I'm going to roll out a couple of these really quickly. Because I want to show you a couple different designs that you can do. So you want this to be about the thickness of a pencil. If you get them too thin, they're going to end up breaking, cracking on you. You want to, oh, I'm sorry, you will also have a wet paper towel at your seat. The clay that you're not using, keep it on the wet paper towel just so it doesn't dry out. Um, if you have it sitting on the paper, the paper obviously is dry and it's sucking the moisture out of your clay. Okay. So now, you are going to score and slip. Scoring is roughing up the surface. Slip is just really wet clay or clay glue. It's kind of like clay mud. So I'm going to take, what you're all gonna have a fork, and scuff up or mark the edge all the way around. Trust me when I tell you, if you do not do this, it is going to fall apart. I don't know from all the projects that we've done in the other classes there are kids that don't score and slip and then their projects fall apart and then they're really sad about it but if I look this is completely smooth if you score and slip I'm going to be able to tell okay so now I'm going to take my slip smear it on here goop it on here I'm going to take one of my coils, I'm going to press it on the edge, I'm going to kind of like taper it down, I'm going to 
going to go around. Okay. Now, here's the part that you have to do in order for this to stay together. You can use the back of your um, wooden needle tool. You can use the back of your fork. You can use your fingers. If you have long nails, you can use your knuckles. I'm going to take bracing this one side. I'm going to smooth the inside. So I need to do that all the way around every time you attach a coil. I'm actually letting this get underneath my fingernail. Oh. Doesn't matter. It works better. You'll see. So the inside will end up being somewhat smooth. And the outside will keep that rope shape. So then when you go to add your next coil, where you ended, where did I end? Right over here, is where you would start. If you want to do a spiral, you're going to take a coil. I would probably cut this because it's a little long. I'm going to taper one end, make it real nice and thin. And then I'm going to roll it up into a spiral. Okay. One side still needs smoothed. So I can use, I'm just going to use my clay tool right now smooth it all together and when you go to attach this you still need to score and slip so every piece that you attach I'm going to score here rough it up add some slip attach it and then I am also going to brace it and smooth it together to the inside Um, I could do more spirals if I wanted to all the way around. I'm going to, this is kind of short to do it with, but I'm going to try to show you a twist. Pinch two ends together. And twist. Then when you go to attach it, what do you have to do? score and slip. So I can't just stick it on there and hope that it stays. I have to actually attach it. Um, these coils, I think that's probably all I'm going to have you do are those two techniques. You're going to say, well, what do I do now? I have one spiral. That's all I want. I just want one spiral. So I'm going to have you go ahead and just rough up your first one again, your top layer. Stick it all the way up to the spiral. Come around. Now I have the choice of going over it, or I can bend it and go back the way I came, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to pinch that off and let it end there. Get it to sit together. I was just watching the time. Could you cut it off instead of folding it? You could. You could cut it off. But now what I want to do when I'm blending this is I want to make sure that my spiral is blended to this coil that I attached to the bottom, that this is all smoothed together. So probably the last 10 minutes of class, I'm going to tell you, do not put any more stuff on there. You start blending your inside together. Or I promise you it will fall apart. I promise. Okay, so the inside needs blended. All the way together. And somebody said, ew, about getting it underneath your fingernail. It's gonna happen regardless. <laughs> it's gonna happen, you can't help it. So at the very end of class, 
once all this is blended together kind of roughly, you can take a second and just smooth out what you have blended together so that you don't have all these digging things on the inside so it looks more like that. Okay. I mean, that's a glaze, but do you see how smooth it is? Do you how, see how smooth this isn't? <laughs> so you want, want to take a moment and the rag or the paper towel that you have and just smooth the inside so it's nice and not bumpy. Okay? Smooth, yes. <laughs> um, when it is time to clean up, you are going to lump your excess clay together, put it on the tray up on the sink. There will be a tray for you. Um, these will get cleaned off, your forks will get cleaned off, and the excess slip will be returned over there. These are going to be carefully carried over to the kiln table to dry out, hopefully over Easter break. All right, any questions? Cool, stop me. <laughs>